Hi everyone, it's Dia with Eat, Run, Plan, Repeat. Welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, thank you for stopping by. In my last video, I mentioned that a few planner companies have reached out to me and asked me to review their products and to create a video for you guys to get the word out there about their product and let you know what I think about them. And at first I was really hesitant because when I don't wanna come off salesy, I would never promote something that I don't fully support. And two, I'm pretty set in my ways. I'm really happy with my planner system right now. I have been for a long time. I don't change things up too often, but then the passion planner came into my life and I don't wanna say everything changed but I have this whole other aspect to my planning now that's kind of planning and memory keeping so I thought I would go ahead and give these planners a try and if they're not for me maybe it's something that could be implemented in your life and you just kind of want to know a little bit more about the planners before you make a purchase so the first one I'll be reviewing is the Wordsworth Planner. The Wordsworth Planner is designed to produce rapid personal growth and guide you to your most ambitious goals. The Wordsworth Planners enable you to objectively track your personal growth, identify areas of improvement, and reinforce successful habits that lead to rock solid self-discipline and continuous improvement. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera around and give you guys a peek inside and show you how I've been using this planner. So the Wordsworth Planner is designed to be a productivity tool to help you instill five habits. They are to determine your why and to track your what and your how, to set short-term, they call them sprint, monthly goals, to name your top priorities for tomorrow each and every night and to record what you've accomplished each day, to establish and track two small to fail micro habits, and five, to practice gratitude. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the planner and show you all of these things that they have talked about and how they have it set up. This is my Wordsworth planner and it is in black because I wanted something a little more simple and classic. It is hardcover and if you like hardcover books, this one seems really well made. It doesn't seem like the pages are gonna detach from the binding anytime soon, which I have experienced with a few other planners. So let me go ahead and open this up and show you how they have it set up. One of the things I love about this planner is its size. It's really small and portable. I have tiny hands and it's it's not too big in my hands, yet it provides a lot of space to write. The first page is this awkward page that's always glued kind of weird. So on here, they just put in case if lost and reward. Next, they've listed out how to use your planner and the benefits you'll get using it. Then they have a travel planning section, which honestly, I don't travel much. I do want to travel and I know I will travel soon, but for me, this isn't very useful right now, but I'm sure this is really useful useful for a lot of people. Next is a time zone section. It's a nice little reference, but honestly, I usually use my phone for this. And then they kind of have this little intro page, goals overview, and a little quote right here. The first section is the mind mapping section. This seems to be popular in a lot of the new planners. I believe this came with a small card explaining how to do this, but I lost it. I have no idea where it is. I think it may have been in the box and I threw away the box. Then you have your vision board section, kind of self-explanatory. I'm sure the card explained a little more about that too. I really like how the goal section is laid out. It has the goal, the target date, the purpose, and the action. And then they have it for your personal life, your professional life, and your family and relationships. When I first looked at this, I felt a little intimidated, but then when I really sat down and looked at it, I realized that it's a really good way to break down your goals. Just writing the purpose, your why, and the next action steps that you're gonna take to achieve them. One of my favorite quotes is a goal without a plan is just a wish is so true. So writing down your goals is so important in accomplishing them. After that comes your monthly section and this planner is divided into three different sections. You have your monthly, your weekly, and then some blank grid pages at the back. I really don't care for this layout because I like to see my monthly calendar and then the weeks followed right behind it. But I think most under dated calendars come with all the months together and all the weeks together. That might not bother some people, but for me, I just feel like I'm flipping back and forth a little bit too much. So let's look at the monthly section. Just like the goals section in the beginning, they kind of have a little smaller version of that here for your monthly goals. And then they have this nice space right here for notes. Then you have your month. For those of you that know me, I'm really basic when it comes to planning. I try and keep things very minimal. I started to use different colors here and that actually turned me off. I didn't like it and it made me not wanna put anything else on my monthly page because I just didn't find it appealing anymore. 
are. So lesson learned, I will not use different colors in the future. I'll just stick to blacking. So this is an undated planner. So it gives you these little boxes to put in the dates. I have pretty small writing. And when it came to the double digits, I had a little bit of a hard time fitting them in there because the boxes are so small. But on the plus side, that leaves a lot of room for writing. These boxes are blank boxes, which is another reason it just doesn't quite fit me. I like to have not even necessarily lines, but I like either a grid or something because as you can see, I write crooked and my letters tend to vary in size if I don't have that guidance. After the month, you have your monthly reflection section. This I actually like. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there are dots on this. So it's not like a big, huge, empty space. And I apologize. I'm not sure if the card that came with this explains what exactly you're supposed to put here more, but that is actually one of my issues with the planner is that the instructions were on a separate card and I did lose them. So now I feel a little lost with this planner. Uh, another planner I had has the instructions built into it. So that's just not an issue with that one. So it has review of last month, my top five accomplishments, what I want to get done, but didn't and why, what I learned this month and plan for next month. This one doesn't have a doc grid, but these are just some basic questions that are really good to ask yourself at the end of the month or even at the end of the week to try and regroup and start strong again the next month. And in the next section, we have the weekly overview. This one is a horizontal layout. I don't really think it works for me. I need more of a checklist. And a lot of times I found that this checklist just wasn't big enough. It also has priority and secondary, which is really good, but I actually have a lot of secondary secondary things that I get done during the day too. So I'm very list oriented and very task oriented and I love to check the boxes off on a list. So I break things down into a bunch of different steps and this just kind of limited me a little on that. I do like that on the left hand side, I could write my appointments in, but honestly <laughs> I'm self-employed and I don't always have a lot of stuff to write in here. I guess I could turn it into like a gratitude journal and write what I'm grateful for for the day, but I just used it to write a few of the things we had going on. It also has your top focus for the week and a note section. And because I am self-employed, I tend to work seven days a week, being a photographer too. A lot of times I'm busy during the week and I need the weekend to get stuff done, which means creating lists. And the weekend layout on this one doesn't come with any check boxes or anything. I know I could just write it in and put little check marks next to it. But for me, I would like this to be just like the rest of the days. It also has I'm grateful for and a reflection section. And while undated has never bothered me in the past, I guess I recently got used to using a dated planner. So just having to write in the numbers is that little extra step I'm really not in the mood to take. And because of that, I guess I wasn't paying attention and I accidentally skipped a week. Something I would have noticed if this was predated. I also want to mention this paper. It is pretty thick paper and I've been using my Kakuno Extra Fine Pen with Heart of Darkness Noodler's Ink and it does a little bit of ghosting on the back. Some places darker than others and I am a really light-handed writer. My advice to you is to pen test some of your fountain pens on the back before you use them in the planning section. And I know I mentioned that there are the three different sections so this this one does come with three different bookmarks and honestly it's a little bit too many for me. I don't like what it does at the top. Sometimes they kind of start to come out a little. I would just rather use paper clips or something to mark my spot, but I do like that they used nice neutral colors. And the last section is the grid section and also a few blank pages. This planner does lie really flat. That's a big thing for me. And in the back, it does have this little pocket and it came with some stickers, which I will probably never use because I'm not much of a sticker person, but it's nice. And this pocket is made out of paper, so you probably wanna be careful with it because it might be easy to rip. So I hope I was able to give you guys a good look at this planner. I think it is a really nice planner. 
it just doesn't fit my planning needs. But if you are interested, you can visit the website below and receive 30% off. If you have any questions for me about this planner, please feel free to ask me the questions down below. This is my opinion of this planner. And although I think it's a good planner, like I said, it just doesn't fit my lifestyle. So I probably won't be using it anymore. So I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos from me, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Bye.